Want to make your pictures look good in just 10 minutes? By the end of this video, I'm going to share with you my basic post-processing tips so you can feel confident about your images. For the best advice on post-processing macro and landscape photography, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified every single time I upload a new video on Thursday. I've helped hundreds of photographers with their post-processing techniques so they can tell their story. And now it's your turn. You do not have to have Lightroom to do this. All you have to do is have a processing system that has sliders and I'll explain that in a second. But one of the things I do want to mention, if you are watching this and your file has JPEG at the end, go ahead and shut this off because this processing is for raw images. JPEGs, when you see at the end, means that you took the picture and the camera itself did the processing. If you're photographing and you just want to take snapshots, JPEGs are the ticket. If you want to express yourself and really make beautiful images, Raw is the ticket because it has more information in your file. That's why it's larger. I actually have a video on raw versus JPEG and you can check that out anytime, but let's get on and start processing. You could do that easily within 10 minutes. You will go into your develop area. As long as you have these sliders over here to the right, you can see these sliders in here. That is the main thing that we're going to do. One of the things that I want to talk to you about is fixing your optics and flattening the image. So look in your program where you can have something like this where it says lens correction and you can open that up and what it does is it removes chromatic aberration. You get up close to an area and you'll see some really funky blue and really weird coloring that is on the side or edges of your image. Now this one does not have chromatic aberration. So the next thing I want you to check is the enable profile corrections. And what that does is the program will look at your camera, the lens that you've used, it will remove distortions or vignetting. That means where it's like really getting funky at the edges. And you can kind of see, look at there's the before, this is the after. So what I like to do is try to pull out the shadows a little bit just to make sure that you can see inside because we're going to play with this a little bit more. So I like to flatten. That means pretty much not have too many shadows or too bright. So I may turn down the whites or the highlights a little bit just to give this an even tone as much as possible. This way I can push the pixels basically. So let's look at the before and after. You can see here how it's very dark and now you can see inside. I want you to think about flattening with using your exposure, highlights, shadow, whites, and blacks. The next thing that I'd like you to pay attention to is the color of your photograph. So over here, I love to leave the navigator open to pay attention to that in a small area and a large area when I do this. In your software, you should have something that can adjust color balance. What's nice about Lightroom is that you have all these fun little areas to play with. Wow, they give you a lot, don't they? <laughs> so let's close that out. You can use this white balance tool here. It is easy to use. See the RGB numbers down below? R, G, B. In order to make this the right color. You can see over to the left in the navigator how it's changing it up. You can use this for creativity if you want to. It's, it doesn't always have to be perfect what you saw unless that's what you want. If you're a more of a creative person like I am, you may just want to pick something funky, let what you're seeing over to the left. But we'll just go ahead and I'm going to show you a tip. The numbers R, G, B have to be really close together in order to pick the right calibration of your camera. Now, most people will pick, you know, the neutral colors. If you want to think of it that way, I always look at the numbers. So these are kind of similar. Let's click on it and it warmed it up a little bit. I've actually even gone into auto, let it do its thing and played with these different 
areas to see how it looks. Now we have the base sticks down and it's time for us to really play. I do want you to pay attention to your image because it will be a little different, but I just want you to think of the steps as what we've done so far. And now it's really time to enhance what you have in front of you. So this is where I talk about this area. Texture, clarify, dehaze, vibrant, saturation. What I do is I like to, if I want more texture, you could see I'm pulling it to the right. If I want that feel, this is now, look at if I want it to soft feel. So just pay attention to see if you want these sliders. What I suggest is now it's time to really push them to figure out what you want in your image. Now this is the vibrance and saturation. This is different. This is adding more of the color within your photograph. The saturation does all of the colors and the vibrance will uh, take and pop the colors, but it won't saturate everything. If you already have saturated colors, it will not saturate those more. Next, what I suggest when you're first starting off is pick this little, this little doodad right here. This is where there's a lot of power for you to really enhance your image. So say if you feel like this is a little too bright, all you have to do is just See, so if I bring it down, it takes that color down. If I push it up, then it will make it brighter. See? So this is really, really powerful, and I highly recommend you using it. That's the luminance one. That's the darks and the lights of the colors in your image. The saturation, say if I feel like the green has too much green, then I can tone it down a little bit. Or if I want more, I can bring it back up. The next thing is hue, and it's changing up the actual color. So let's go back to green. So let's say if I want it to a more brownish feel of the green, you know, have a little bit more yellowish, you pull it up, it's gonna take it back to the green. The last part that I wanna share with you before we get into the bonus area of your final steps to perfection is the effects tool right here. So a lot of times with macro especially, you may wanna keep the viewer's eyes within the frame. So the best way to do that is to add a little vignette. You can, let's just go extreme so you can see what it does. See how it changes the midpoints. And then highlights, if you want to bring back the highlights, you can do that here, see. Comment below on the best tools that you've learned so far in this video. Now let's get to the bonus details. So let's get started with your bonus area. I'm super excited to show you some steps for perfection. And most of these tools are available in other platforms, other software platforms. And that are these tools right in here. I would look at and evaluate my image and see what is distracting. To me, this is distracting over here and I actually don't like the edges. This is the crop tool, and I personally just want to remove some of it. So you look at your main subject, and then I'll go ahead and do that. Then the next thing over here you'll see is, this is the clone and heal. This is where you can clean your images up. And you can see the size, the feather, the opacity. What I suggest you do is go over all the areas that are taking away from your beautiful picture. The sunflower, it has little specks. So let's just clean those up because personally, they're not really part of the story. It's not about a dying sunflower. It's about a fun sunflower that has not opened and it has youth, but it's of course it's outdoors. So we're just gonna, anything that breaks your eyes with the flow of the subject. This tool right here, the gradient tool, is really, really powerful. I love it. I like to actually make a vignette or rather than using the effects down here at the bottom, most of the time I'm making vignettes to lead your eyes into an area that I want you to go to. Push my mouse and drag it. If I want a new adjustment because it's different, then I will go ahead and then I'll copy it for this side. And the next one is kind of the same as this. What I wanna share with you is this one's more of a circular one. And when you use this selection, like right now you can see it's in the edit, you can use all these to enhance. Maybe I wanna brighten it a little bit. 
and I want it blurry, so I'm gonna take the contrast down. Now it's gotten into the areas that I don't want it to, like some of this area in here, it's kind of affected all that. What's really cool, you just click over here to the brush area. Once you do that, this is also the brush area, just so you know, but this brush area, you can change everything up in here if you want. But what I love about this is I'll click here on erase, and then I will, you can see there's a little negative side here. You can see this negative area. And then here you can use your bracket tools to make it large or small. And then I'll just start painting some of this off. And you can see here, there's a flow, a feather, the size, you can adjust it this way if you want, but I like to use the bracket tools. You can also use the brush tool if you want. So if you wanna paint something in, you can do that here. Maybe I want to darken this area up. So I will go ahead and change this exposure, maybe go down a little bit, add some more green, cause it's kind of green. Let's just bring this up a little bit and I'll just go ahead and darken this area just a little bit more, why not? Now again, if I wanted to erase, all I have to do is click the erase tool and it'll remove some of it. So if I feel like it's gotten too much, you just remove it. Here is the before I started. Very cool and really fast. Now you know how to do some basic post-processing within 10 minutes. But what if you wanna take it to the next level? I have coming soon a post-processing workshop where we evaluate your images. If you're interested, check out the link down below. Also, join our Facebook group. I jump in every single Tuesday live to answer your questions. Check out the video series down below on how to express yourself in your work, where we will shoot a flower and post-process it to express your feelings. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this with your friends. And always remember that your thousand words does make a difference. Cheers.